But I should say down straight. Okay, so quick. So what is an exchange traded fund? So for all, the simplest way people put it, as I said, because that's so cool. Sorry, sorry. Um, it's essentially buying a basket of shares. Now, this is kind of what's really going on underneath, you know, because you're not really, you don't actually own those shares, kind of like with a pension fund. <laughs> No, <laughs> so as I love, right? It's kind of like um, with a pension fund, but we'll get to that. So, within with actual shares, as I said, on own shares in Purple Group, own shares in Old Mutual, um, own shares in Sibanye, yeah, Sibanye, Sibanye, Sibanye still water, right? Yeah, Sibanye still water. Um, oh no, square. <laughs> so, owning shares there. When I own those shares. I actually own those shares as actual assets, names on their ownership in those actual shares. Right now, the difference with ETFs is when you don't actually own the ETF, you have you, you. So then, e what an ETF basically does is when I say a basket of shares, what it does is it basically you have someone who would basically say, okay, let's buy up these 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 shares, right? Um, banks or whatever the case. Okay, so let's say they're looking at the banks or the finance sector. So they're looking at the finance sector and they're buying that. And then essentially you've got a price for that. So if I were to buy these, um, how much would my ETF be? Yeah. If I were to buy these, how much would my ETF be? Right. So ETF would be like 10 Rand um, each. Right. 10 Rand a unit of it. Anyway, so I've got that. Now, here's the thing. That person controls the ETF, right? Depends, again, whether it's an actively or passively managed ETF. We're not going to get into those things, but let's just say Law Mundo is actively buying and selling, etc. It's tracking that. Right. I'm a finance yard. Now, what's basically happening at that point is this person owns the ETF, and the ETF owns those shares. Right. So this person has a basket of these shares. Then you come along and you buy the ETF, which is essentially tracking those shares right it's tracking those shares now when it's tracking those shares obviously this person's making money which is cool if, if it goes up and if it goes down less money is being made and that's how, essentially how you're making money so essentially you're buying in but you're buying into the etf um not necessarily the shares themselves so when you're buying into the etf and not necessarily the shares themselves that's why you technically don't own the shares, you would own the ETFs, right? That's why you buy the ETF to unit. Um, you can see what's in the ETF, right? You can see what's in the ETF, but proof that you don't actually own those is the fact that even if it's passively or actively managed, you don't have a say as to how it's going to be distributed because you're investing in the ETF, which is tracking those shares. So your ownership is in the your ownership or your assets is the unit which is tracking the etf let's just say it's essentially the etf or in a way the share is the etf kind of because it's, it's tracking that but you don't actually own the shares now that's not to downgrade the etf or to say the etf is bad it's great right it has a lot of upside and willing island has a lot of upside um you can have dividends, you can have dividend ETFs, you can have growth ETFs. Like, there's nothing wrong with an ETF. I'm just saying, and it's an investment. So if someone's like, do you have any investments? Yes. What are you invested in? In the, in the ETF. Great, right? It's an asset. So it's not to downplay it. It's just people shouldn't confuse. Some saying something like, um, I've, got, I've got an investment in the old share and then think that they've got shares in all of those companies. They're, they've got an ETF that they've invested in which tracks all those companies, but they don't have those. That's why when you buy the actual shares and then they have like an annual general meeting, AGM, you get an email basically telling you that we have an AGM and at times you can invite it, etc., etc. right? If it's for an AGM or shareholders meeting, etc., you can get invited to those, um, not as a director, but as a shareholder. Um, to vote in the central, all those things, right? When you have an ETF, you don't get that because it's tracking those shares and you don't own those shares. So you're not entitled to that, right? That person who bought those shares and bought the ETF, yes, perhaps, but not you, the person who invested in the ETF. 
if that makes sense. So think of it this way: in uh, imagine you own, imagine you you buy a share into a company that owns um, real estate. You don't own those real estates. You own the com- You own shares in that company that owns the real estate. So the real estate, right? The title deed is under the company. And then you're like, well, I own the company. Yes. But if you own like 5% of the company, 1% of the company, um, and they call, and they're calling, they're not going to call um, me. They're going to call, say, DFG Capital. Right. Then I can come representing DFG Capital. See, it makes sense. So the entity, it would be DFG Capital that owns the real estate. And then if I'm the CEO of DFG Capital, I go there, um, yeah, well, which is why when I leave, DFG Capital still owns the real estate, if that makes sense. Now, again, it's not a bad thing because if the real estate goes up, then obviously the company makes money, which means you make money. It's just you as a shareholder that don't, you can't, that's why you can't invest in, in, in a company that owns... Um, a particular mall and then you walk in and you say um, I own this mall so if I bought Vogile Fund which owns Phoenix Plaza that's where I'm at now I can't then walk into Phoenix Plaza and say I own uh, this I, I have shares in the no I no, I have shares in Vogile Fund which owns this but I have no I have no say as to how Phoenix Plaza is run because I don't own Phoenix Plaza I own hypothetically I would own the shares that um, I would own the shares of the company that owns Phoenix Plaza. So if Phoenix Plaza has a, a, a meeting or whatever, I don't get called. Now, if Bugila Fund has a meeting, I get called, but not Phoenix Plaza. I mean, if that makes sense. So it goes back to Linda Woods. Again, ETFs are not a bad thing. Google Woods, don't say, I own an ETF, and then think you own the shares. You own the ETF. But they are both investments, perfect. They're not a bad thing. They are both investments and they're both great. Just understand the difference.